Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Allerins and in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys my unbiased review of my Le Creuset Sitzho Pan after using it for six months. It is my top rated video and I know that a lot of you guys enjoyed and watch it. That is why I am back again to update you my thoughts about the product. If you are new to my channel, please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos like this about lifestyle tips that will surely help you if you wanted to find some inspiration and if you just wanted to have a peek of my life here as a Filipina living here in New York City. So I've been using the pot basically for almost every day ever since I got it and if I'm going to rate it, I think I will rate it 9 out of 10 due to the following reasons. First, if you're the person who loves to cook with sauces and soup, then this is the right pot for you. The sloping side and the large surface, I find it very ideal for simmering, slow reduction, slow cooking, or however you want to call it. As a Filipina, I cook a lot of saucy foods over here. From sinigang, nilaga, adobo, machado, and I also try deep frying with this pan. I've done my pasta dishes here too, anywhere from bolognese, carbonara, tomato garlic pasta, alfredo. And because it's wide, it was able to accommodate the very well, unlike the regular Dutch oven, which is very deep. I also find this one very convenient. As the sloped sides and rounded base makes it easy for me to mix what I'm cooking. I can reach the corners using my spatula than when I'm using deep pans. I also have tried deep frying here and if you are just deep frying a very moderate amount then it's good because it won't overflow. Though in deep frying, I think if it's for more than four people or if it's a big amount of deep frying, I think it will be better if you go for a deep pan. In that case though, a deeper pan would work better because it won't overflow, not like this, because it won't use too much oil, unlike this at all because it's wider. But hey, as what it said, it works, just don't fill it too much. Second is that my food tastes so much better. I think my food tastes so much better now because it has a more concentrated and delicate flavoring which earns a lot of praise whenever we have visitors and I will cook for them. And specifically, this is more evident when I'm cooking soups, broths, or dishes, or what we call ulam back home in the Philippines. There are some dishes that you need to simmer them for at least 30 minutes to an hour to a couple of hours. And I feel like this dishes is the best dishes to cook in my like to say a toe pan. Dishes with longer cooking times benefit well from this pan. I also figure that cooking with broths, this a toe pan doesn't dry the soup as much compared to a regular pan. So for example, using the same heat but with a different pan, like a regular pan, versus the Le Creuset pan, the soup dries and evaporates very easily on a regular pan. However, on my Le Creuset, the soup is preserved well and doesn't dry as much. So whenever I'm cooking soupy foods, I have more flavorish, aromatic soup just by using this pan. And one of my favorite dish to cook in this pan is my nilaga, my sinigang, my bulolo, Taiwanese beef noodle soup, and my machado. The third thing that I like about this pan is its ability to hold heat. So I love to eat hot or at least warm food. And I even love that even if I finish cooking 30 minutes ago, and when I come back for another round, my food is still warm and I don't need to reheat my food. And also because it retains the heat well, it can also be used as a serving tool and just put it straight to the table. And just looking at my pan color, it's cream and new neutral and I'm pretty sure it will look good on the table. I also heard that you can use the pan the other way around. You can use it storing cold salads and putting it in the ref but I have not personally done this. I just wanted to share with you guys additional uses of the pan in case you are buying one. The fourth thing that I love about my Sato pan is that it heats up easily and the heat is well distributed all throughout the pan. It's distributed from the bottom of the pan, on the sides of the pan, and I just figured that compared to a regular pan, that my food is cooked up evenly simply because it heats up all the parts of the pan. 
I also used instant pots before and I swear it's 10 times better because of the flavor it produces and who doesn't want a good tasting food, right? The fifth thing that I like about this pan is that it's very versatile. I've used it in a gas stove, on an induction cooker, in an oven, and it works pretty well. I have not tried putting this pan on a dishwasher, so I can't really talk about that. But what I'm sure of is that wherever I go or if I ever move apartments, then I can bring this pan and I can use it. The sixth reason why I love this pan is because it cleans up easily. Now what I do here after cooking my dish, I let it cool first. And after eating my food, I'll soak it in the room temperature water. I'll let it sit there for another half an hour or so. And when I come back, all the stains from cooking will easily slide from the pan. And now, just because this is a fair review and nothing is perfect, let's now go to the cons of having the pan. First is because the color is cream and neutral that it's a little bit high maintenance. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie, there was a point in where I wish that I should have bought a darker color because this is white. It's almost white and you can see the stains easily from this pen. I wanted to save as much time as I can and I don't have the time to, to always deep clean my pan every day. What I figured out though is that there are some magic tricks that you can use for you to be able to save time in cleaning your pan. It is by soaking the pan in a mixture of baking soda, dish soap, and water. I will make it as a paste and I will soak it overnight. You will be surprised guys how the next day it will look so different. The dirt will be wiped out easily and it will look brand new. Second is that the pan is a little bit picky when it comes to utensil tools. If you wanted to preserve your pan, you can take care of it using wooden tools because metals will scratch the pan. It's just a little bit inconvenient because I need to change my metal tools to wood and sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I'll forget and then I'll just use the metal tool and it will scratch the pan a little bit. Third is that the pan is a bit heavy. This is not a big deal, but sometimes when I'm transferring the pan from one place to another, it can get really heavy, especially when it's soup and when it's hot. It's a bit inconvenient, but again, it's not a big deal for me. Fourth is that the pan is a bit bulky and it needs a good storage. Again, not a deal breaker for me, but if you're living in a place where there's not much space, like in New York City, you know, you need to make sure that you have a proper storage for the pan because if you don't have lots of counter space to put the pan or just storage in your kitchen, then it could be a little bit of a problem. Again, it's not a deal breaker because usually pans are big, but it's a thing to consider. And that's it! That is my experience so far using my Le Creuset Sato pan. I honestly feel like it's worth it of the price tag because of its versatility and the aroma it produces on my food, especially for soup-based dishes. Also, if you can find it, it's on sale right now. It's worth 180 instead of 300 so that's a huge saving. I put a link down below of the Le Creuset pans that are on sale and hopefully when you watch this video, it's still on sale so you can save a lot of money. And also, last point that I wanted to put in here is that if you think about it, like if you buy a $30 or a $40 pan and if you need to buy it over and over again just because the quality is not good so in the end you might end up paying more than the 180 price tag over the years since it's not a quality brand but at least in this look or safe pan you know you can pass it generations to generations if you just take care of the pan then it will last for a long time I have some friends who had their Le Creuset that was passed to them by their grandmothers and is still working as good. So to me, this is a really great investment. Do you guys have a Le Creuset pan too or are you considering buying one? What kind of Le Creuset pan do you want it to buy? Put it in the comment section below and once you bought it, let me know what you think. And if you feel like I missed anything and you are a Le Creuset pan lover, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that highlighting the pros and cons of buying a Le Creuset pan will be helpful to all of you guys out there thinking of buying a Le Creuset pan in the future. Thank you so much again for your time and please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos like this.